Hi everyone, welcome to Life Edge, because life just shouldn't be mediocre. I am Rick Zanotti, president of Relate Corporation, and I am joined by Dr. Susan Nash, my good friend and co-host, and we're ready to have a really good show. Susan, are you curious about our guest? <laughs> Absolutely. Me and too. And Kristen Hales is here to talk to us. Yeah, and uh, in-house we've got Harold Muliati, he's our video producer. Here we go. This show is sponsored by Relay Corporation. Digital learning development, media development, corporate video, management consulting, and more. Visit us at www.relate.com. Thanks. And we are back, and in that center position of power, that's what we call it. You're, you're, you're the powerful one today, Kristen. We've got Kristen Hales joining us from Curious.com. So there was a little bit of a pun there with the Curious. Um, Kristen, how'd you come up with the name Curious? Well, that's a good question. Um, hi, thanks for having me on the show. Oh, and um, let's see. I don't know. I guess I'm just always curious. And I think one of the things that I'm looking for in what I do is touching everybody's curiosity, understanding that um, people learn best when they're curious about things and they investigate things on their own. And um, I I think I had it in the beginning as Curie U, like Curie hmm. uni University, Curie, you know, something educational. But but then somebody suggests um, Curious in, in our conversation. And I said, hey, that's that sounds really good. I'm just going to go with that. And so that's what it is. It's a great name. And... I don't know if it's missing today as much as it used to be. People don't seem as curious as much. They don't want to learn as much. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Uh, what do you think, Susan? I think that you're right. I think that sometimes it depends on what it is. For example, um, I think that for in the case of math, maybe uh, math fear makes people afraid, but if they could be curious about something, then they could overcome their fear. I mean, that's, uh, I'm interested to see, hear what you have to say about that, Kristen. Yeah, I actually, um, I don't think people have time to be curious anymore. Well, I don't know if they ever had time, unless you're talking about you know, the ancient Greeks. We just have to, a lot of students have to, Actually, I think probably beginning in fourth grade, maybe in fifth grade, kids are, they sit in class and they're taught these subjects, they're taught this curriculum. And it goes so fast that if somebody doesn't understand it, it just goes right past them. And all that they have time for is just trying to catch up and trying to um, do their homework and understanding what the heck it is that the teacher's trying to tell them. So they're not able, people just aren't able to like sit and think, what, what, what am I doing? What is this all about? Why am I even doing uh, these problems? And, and no, this isn't fun for me because this is hard and I don't know why I'm doing it. And um, I would, I don't know. I don't think people even consider exploring math or technical subjects. And, and it's interesting, because as you're saying that, I'm thinking back on a lot of the teachers and professors I had who were math teachers. And I can only think of maybe one or two out of maybe 10 or 15 who even liked math. They were just miserable as human beings. Like, I hate life. I hate you. I hate everything. It's like, geez. Um, and so, yeah. you know, you go into a class and the guys are it's angry and you go, this isn't fun. Um, and and we I, I was talking with Kristen, earlier today, we were talking a little pre-show, and we talked about the show and, and what to expect, and I, I, we were talking about context, and a lot of times math is never taught in a practical way. So the kids have no idea what's going on. Why are we doing this? What's a negative number? Why do we have negative numbers? What, what's multiplication? What are we doing? And 
Rarely do teachers explain it in terms of something useful, like, hey, here's your change, how you make money, how you pay for things, or, or anything else. And so that's probably part of it, too. They have no time. They don't get it. They rush mm-hmm. through these chapters, and they're done. And at the end, they go, I don't know what I learned or why I even learned it. Uh, yeah. my, da- my daughter, is almost, well, she's 30 now, and to this day, she still hates the idea of math. I think she took geometry four times and finally passed it. Um, And it wasn't that she couldn't do it. She had a mental block. It was a complete mental block and didn't get, why do I care what a triangle is? (laughs) And and it just went from there. What's a box? Why do I I care about a square? What's an angle? What's what's your angle? So it was just trying to get her through the class and figure out how it was better or worse. This is before Khan Academy and other things that could maybe help you a bit, because school wasn't all that helpful with that. So, well, that's why you're here, Kristen, because you are doing something about it. You're teaching people math, science, tech. Oh, did we lose somebody? Um, I think that she's reconnecting. Ah, okay. Yeah, it seems the connection was like. I think we have you back. I was just talking, I don't know how much you caught of that, of uh, uh, it. math teaching today is out of context many times. It's always been out of context and since I was growing up. Out of context, people don't quite get it. They don't know why they're doing things. And, and at the end of that, I said, and that's why Kristen's here, because she's, going, she's actually starting a new thing about teaching people math, technology, science, that makes more sense. That actually may be more fun that they'll get more out of. And that's when you got cut off. So anyway, that was my, my segue to you. What do you think about that? Kristen? Okay, so uh, ah, thumbs up if you can see me and, and hear what I'm saying. And if you can, okay, good, you. I'll just keep going. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the things that I do are just fun activities that the kids, especially the younger kids, really appreciate just for the sake of doing them. Um, you know, we we do, we, we work with, with Play-Doh, we work with building things, we work with, we work in teams and we play games. It, I, I teach a couple different types of classes. One of them is um, math circles. So that's just a different subject every time. And a lot of the subjects are subjects that kids have never heard of. Like, for instance, knots. We do, um, we do not, we talk about knots. And knots are really important in math because they, um, people study them to look at protein folding, for instance. So, but it's an actual mathematical subject that mathematicians studied because they just wanted to. Um, they enjoyed it and it was fun to classify these knots. And, so there's other things, graph theory, I mean, logic, um, just just different different games that we play. So so that's fun, and they love these classes, and they don't actually know that they're walking through the math, a mathematical, logical mm-hmm. process in their brain. So what's happening is they're enjoying it, they're having fun, and they're learning, and they don't, they don't, they don't know it. <laughs> so... Um, so, but, but they practice these skills that are going to help them later on in life. And so I do that. Another class that I teach, if somebody wanted to say something? Listening. I think we're listening. Okay. I thought I heard something. Um, another class I teach is, um, it's content that's been created by Joe Bowler at Stanford University. She's got a group. Uh, she and her colleagues, um, Kathy Williams, I think it is. I don't, I want to make sure I get her name right. Um, uh, Kathy Williams, yeah. So they've created a set of of exercises. They are a whole bunch of books, a whole bunch of content. And Bill Bowler worked with the neuroscience department Mm. at Stanford. And they looked at the brain uh, when people were doing math. And they wanted to see what was happening in the in the brain when people did math. And she, they they um, figured out that it's not just one um, like the logical center of your brain. It's you know the visual a couple of different visual centers are touched. 
all these different um, centers are touched when you do math. And so the brain wants to think of math visually. So a lot of the activities in the mindset mathematics that I, I go through, um, the kids get to work with things, they get to talk to people. Um, we do activities where they play with math, they explore the different things. They um, Another really important thing that she um, talks about a lot is that when we make mistakes, um, that's when we have brain growth. So I like to give the kids a lot of opportunity to make mistakes. They try to figure stuff out. They make mistakes, then they go about it a different way. We get together and we talk about mistakes or whatever we, you know, what worked and what didn't work. And while we're doing this, um, all these different brain centers are being touched and we're making connections. And when we talk about ideas, so, so an idea is easily compressed in the brain, right? It, ideas are compressed, methods aren't. Hmm. So when you try to memorize a formula, for instance, it doesn't, it goes into your brain and you might be able to recall it maybe a little bit, a little while longer, but that isn't, doesn't get compressed in the brain. It doesn't become part of you. But like, for instance, um, say addition, like it's like the concept of five plus six um, to a child, to like a kindergartner, it's difficult for them. You know, they have to really understand that and work with that and play with it in different ways to see what does that really mean, five plus six. But then as you grow older, like you're an adult, you like, you just know what five plus six is. It's, it's part of you. You can take that concept and you can use it. So that whole idea between these new approach to math, approach to math, um, the different approach to math, different from what you get in a typical school curriculum. So that's how, what the whole thing is all about is just ma making it more comfortable for the kids, um, less stressful, because when you're going through stress, it's harder to recall things. Mm -hmm. um, and to understand that there's really just no, um, no math person. I mean, anybody can do this so long as they go about it in a slow way and then um, investigating things as they go along. Um, anybody can do math at high levels. And unfortunately, the problem is that so many kids early on in life and, and adults too, they just make them think I'm just not a math person. And I can't do that. And I'm just, you know, it just closes off a whole um, segment of future career, you know, of, of life to, to people. And they make this decision when they're, um, what, 10 years old. <laughs> so I'm hoping to prevent that in the future. Um, you know, I could go on about my bad math experiences that I've had. And that's one of one of the reasons why I want to do this, um, because I'm finally figuring out at my age that it's not um, that I, I may mean, I'm just maybe it's not that I'm a bad that I'm a bad math person. Or I don't I can't do math, but it's just that I've gone about it the wrong way. Hmm. Now, it's interesting because both of you, Susan and Chris, Kristen, you're both. You have a Kristen has a degree in geo, geophysics. She worked for many years as a geophysicist. Uh, Susan has a degree in geology, among others, but geology was her first. And uh, let me ask you, Kristen, when you were growing up, was math easy? Well, uh, math was easy for me in the beginning, you know, in elementary school. Um, I did. I guess I just got it. I I did really well in math, and I did well in math up until, um, actually in high school I took calculus, and hmm. so I was. I thought that I was great. I was this amazing student, and I was doing really great until I hit calculus, and that's when I just realized that everything isn't cut and, is isn't easy. It's not hmm. cut 
and draw it. And I had to actually, I didn't understand what we were doing with these Riemann sums and, uh, I mean, it, and uh, uh, derivatives. What, what is a, what, a, what is all this? And so I really wish that I had had the opportunity to understand um, what that all was rather than just rushing through the, the problems. Hmm. Now, Susan, how good were you at math? I loved math. I was such a math okay. nerd. And, and so I like math and Latin and m- music and things like that. I also like swimming, but I was like all heart and no talent. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but in the case of, of um, math, I kind of I understand that situation because I, I had the chance to take trigonometry and, and um and elementary functions in high school. So when I went to college, I took calculus and um, and and analytic geometry as a freshman, and that was all good. And then it was really great because that's like Calc three was basically the same as Physics one. Mm-hmm. So that I could see that if you didn't take them in sequence, it would be terrible, and and it would be very disappointing. And then when I took differential equations, my professor always said, God bless Kreisig. <laughs> and Kreisig was the name of the, the the author of the book, which makes me think, hmm, I wonder what happened to that textbook. I'm going to get one on Amazon, a used one. <laughs> but it just, it. I mean, I love what Kristen is doing because it's all about the approach. Yeah. And I was just the opposite. I wasn't, I was good at math until pretty much trig and trig wiped me i was like ah i don't get trig and i had a calculator this is the first year calculators were being allowed in, in university work and but i but my teacher wouldn't let us use them i go oh, can i use a, a calculator slide rules only uh um and and i, I did trig and geometry weren't my favorites but i loved algebra the algebra was fine and and calculus i thought was the coolest thing uh, differential equations weren't bad, it, but the geometry and trig were the hard ones. And I was like, uh. and that one I never got until I got older. And then I just went back, I think in like 40s, and I said, I just want to learn it again. And then I found it easy. It was funny, but not when I was a kid. And, and I think, you know, you were saying something earlier today, Kristen, when we were talking offline, that you kind of got a lot of it also where you understood it or really appreciated it more as you got older. Um, that mm-hmm. was kind of like my story. Same thing. I, I liked part of it, but I didn't quite get it. I didn't quite get why we were doing it until I, I, I found a place in the library at the university, which was the math section. I went, oh, math section. And then I looked and I went, oh, wait, what's this philosophy of math? The theory of math. All of a sudden I was going, Theory? Whoa. And then I got really into it. I found it exciting because it was a whole different look at, at math from what we were really taught, which was no theory, no philosophy, no why we did it. Just do it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, one of the things, the, the reason why I've recently really gotten into it is because I just happened to uh, be listening to the Knowledge Project podcast. Mm. Um I don't listen to that all the time. I, I really should. It, there's a lot of really great topics. Um, and they had on Stephen Strogatz. I don't know if you know who Stephen Strogatz is, but he does. he's a mathematician at Cornell University. And he does a lot with... Um, um, power, power of Infinity. And he also mm-hmm. wrote The Joy of X and um, Sync. So I've recently read all those books. And it's just a lot about um, how math is um, important in our lives. Like um, he did some work with fireflies and how how fireflies can, there's this, this type of firefly, and I, can't, I think it was Malaysia. I can't remember really where it was, but I think it was Malaysia but just miles of fireflies at a certain time of night and mm. they start flashing and they're all in sync. It's like this, it's like Christmas lights, it's like going on and off and they're all in, if you're up in a, in a, in a, in a plane at that time, it's just beautiful. And so he um, studied these fireflies, he and his group studied these fireflies and you know, he's, he's done a lot of work with like networks, um, 
you know how computer network different networks and um it, it's and and synchronization and mm-hmm. synchronization is so important in so many different things that we do and um it's just interesting like i never would have thought of math and fireflies before and so i love reading these books um i'm reading the joy of x right now which is like a journey from arithmetic up until higher higher mm-hmm. math and it's written um address it's addressing like people who aren't mathematicians so it's 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 just interesting. That's interesting. You know, it's another yeah. thing interesting. When you brought up the fireflies, it reminded me of something I actually experienced once, but but I read about, and that is if you get a lot of people in one room, like a, like an audience in a concert hall, and mm-hmm. you're listening to something like maybe Taiko drummers from Japan or just something with heavy percussion, the, if the percussion is is correct or if it's at the right rhythm or right beat then the people in the audience, their hearts will start syncopating with that beat. Yeah. And so you could have a whole audience That's of people amazing. all... And it's actually kind of interesting. It's kind of scary, too. I had a pneumonia when I was 40 years old, and I went to see a taiko drumming thing locally. And in the, I'm, I'm just recuperating, and all of a sudden, it's hitting. And I'm going, oh, my gosh, I'm feeling more and more tired. And because... <laughs> so I was going... Internal this is, dancing. Yeah, it wasn't good. <laughs> Uh, but but if you're healthy, it was really it would be absolutely interesting, and that's why people react so much to let's say rock music, which again the beat boom 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 mm-hmm. boom, and the wow. hearts are going boom 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 boom, and when you're done, you've actually had a workout. That's it's well, really yeah. rather interesting, but and I bet it's you the the fireflies yeah. are probably similar in some ways. One one starts and the other ones all go. It's it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Well, one thing that I find to be really fascinating, too, and this really kind of ties together, Rick. Um, so, Kristen, you, what I see that you're doing, you have the mental math and things, and, you're, and you start and you talk about patterns. Well, I mean, I just think that is so smart, and I also obviously see the geophysics, geophysicist in you, <laughs> but seeing patterns and um, getting young learners ready for machine learning hmm. and yeah. artificial intelligence and just so, so that it's natural to like understand mm-hmm. that math does that. Yeah, I was um, talking to Rick earlier kind of about that, um, how I like the idea of doing this kind of math at an early age and, um, you know, in elementary school doing doing the fun exploratory math. And, and I was saying there's another um, – guy, um, Steve, um, Conrad Wolfram, he's, he's talked about changing high school mathematics um, so that um, instead, of, instead of concentrating on learning equations and memorizing things and, and learning the methods of um, calculus and all these different methods and not um, understanding um, why um, while they're doing it, he thinks that there are even everybody's going to be everybody's going to need to know math in any career choice that they make or any just to answer the questions that they have. There's questions of the pandemic. There's questions, sociology questions. There's que- just things that we need to answer about society. And the way that we answer these questions is using mathematical models. So he's saying, well, you know, teach kids how to, to you know. Find them in the early eight, in the early years to um, learn about data and mm-hmm. and um, just really understand math and think about math. And then when they get to high school, and they have to recognize well, what mathematical model do I need to apply to um, answer my question? Now, then you you talk about well, how do I um, how do I solve that model? How do I work with that model using computers? How do I actually use math? And then, and then once you think about that model, then then you learn um, the quadratic equation or whatever it is, whatever type of math that is in your mathematical model. So, um, so Conrad Wolfram, he he developed Mathematica. It's a mathematical software. And they have these modules that um, that teach this method, and so that's another thing that I would like to incorporate into what I'm doing for high schoolers. Um, 
Yeah, and it's all about patterns. It's it's all about, um, and that's one of the things that they will be doing in, in um, pattern recognition. Um, this is the kind of stuff that you can then take from there and then learn more about in um, college and then take it into the workplace and actually and then, use and then, it. And then, Kristen, once you get pattern recognitions mathematically, what do our brains do? They're pattern recognition yeah. machines. Yes. So now you've got Absolutely. now you've got neuroscience covered and people people when you first start talking about we well, you know our brains really just recognize patterns and the more patterns you can recognize they usually say maybe the smarter you are or maybe the the quicker you are at learning things because you can see more patterns or you can hear more patterns because you know our sight our hearing all of our senses in essence become patterns in the brain and, and that's fascinating because you start with one thing like math and all of a sudden you're now into a whole mess of other subjects. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It, yeah. it, it's, I mean, it's all one where it's all um, integrated. I, have, I always thought that math is completely integrated into every mm -hmm. aspect of society. Yeah. Oh, that's totally. Crazy. And I love the fact that like I, I, I didn't really enjoy learning probability and statistics mm -hmm. in college rather than earlier. And imagine if you could start a third grader understanding the concept of probability and statistics rather than waiting until yeah. your third year of college or, well, first year usually, <laughs> or second year. But, I mean, that would be less painful <laughs> because you'd have it, you'd have all the scaffolding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I do talk about um, probability and statistics in, in some of my classes. I did a math circle. It was it was really fun, and I and I designed this math circle with the help of my daughter, who was maybe I don't know ten at the time. And I, I did it with um, you know those jelly beans that taste really terrible, and I and uh, Hershey's Kiss, and I I don't know if you know about the Monty Hall pro problem. It's it's um, okay. I have three doors, mm -hmm. and I get to choose one door, and then they open the door. And then I get to decide, do I want to switch my, do I want to, um, do I want to choose another door or stick with, I, I, I can't remember. It was like years ago, but it was a probability. It was a probability problem. And, and we talked about the probability, but we incorporated um, a game of, of this, what is it called? Being boozled in, into it. And they really enjoyed that. I mean, that's not... That's just a math circle, like a fun, a fun way of incorporating math with um, a math concept with um, something that they love to do. But um, you just reminded me of, of that when, when you talked about probability and statistics. And there, there's so many ways. I, the, the, math, the mindset mathematics has some probability in it. So um, there's so many ways. We even talk about, um, de about big data in third grade. Um, yeah. So it's good to start early and then kind of weave it in as they get older and older. It becomes part of them. Oh, absolutely. So what are your plans for the future? Uh, well, um, what I have now is I have some, some, some in-person classes that I'm teaching. And then I have some online classes too and the online classes I'm trying to offer all for on a donation only basis so so people choose what they pay for the online courses so I'm hoping to one of my um, goals is to be able to offer this kind of math to whoever wants it and um, large scale so I can see I, I really hope I would be able to have one class and then be able to kind of fundraise or maybe some people donate more than than other people and we can fund this class and then once once that's funded then we can open up more classes online classes I can um, get some other maybe math grad students to help me teach them um, there's a, a, a online writing uh, writing program that I'm trying to kind of mimic. I mean, they, they don't do it for donations. They, they, they charge a fee for everything, but um, it's called Brave Writer. 
and she has just a whole bunch of different teachers teaching writing courses. So I'm hoping to maybe have a whole bunch of math teachers. Um, I also want to have courses um, like I teach Arduino. I'm sorry, you cut off a little uh, bit. Can, can and you go- I need. I just like to get. Kristen, can you go back to where you, you cut off a little bit on that? Yeah, I'd like to offer more courses. Um, I want to have some experts uh, host. I want to host some course. If anybody else has some a course that they want to offer, I'd like to be able to offer those. Um, so long as they kind of mesh with my philosophy of exploration and curiosity. And um, I'm not looking for like a really strict... Um, you know, with time tests and all that kind of thing and not looking for those kind of classes. Uh, I'd like to have a, I'd really love to have a blog and a community. And uh, I think I have, if you look at my About Us page on there, that I'm kind of showing everything that I'm planning on doing. And um, some of them say that it's up, you go up. You scrolled past it um, right there. So some of them say they're coming soon and some of them say that they're already here, like the live classes and um, I can't really read it, but the first two icons upper left uh, and all the other ones I'm still working on. So, so that's what I plan on for the future. I love it. Well, I, and I, just, I just really I would love to have this. some other people to work with on this too. Well, I just I think is what you're doing, Kristen, is incredibly important, and especially now that we see more and more emphasis on people screen time and and standardized tests and studying mm-hmm. for the test and taking time to be curious and be creative and having it in different formats is just fantastic. Yeah, and it just makes it more fun. I mean, how many people um, love their math class? They look forward to their math <laughs> class. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping to attract more um, un- non-traditional students to math and science, to math and technology. I mean, I, I have this one student who she absolutely hated math and um yeah, I have two stories. I Well, this one student, she absolutely hated math. She's an artistic person. But then when I did this one exercise with her, when this one activity, she was like, wow, I um, I kind of like math now. I feel better about math. And and she, her mom actually asked me for more examples and things that she could do um, and asked me for more information so she could do more of that. And so that's, that kind of stuff just makes me, just warms my heart. And um, and I wanted to also talk about uh, my da- my daughter who she I do um, homeschool her and she when the math that she knew was the math that I do and she whenever I would ask her whenever I would ask her what subject do you like the best she would always say math is my favorite subject and you know I would smile. Um, <laughs> And, but then she wanted to try out fifth grade. And so she went to fifth grade and she took and she took class. And the problem with that class is that it was just so fast. Um, she really, she really didn't like it. And the, the teacher had a lot of competition set up between the, all the different students. And she would point out the different students that were doing good and they were doing bad. and. And uh, she would teach the subject and then she would move on. And after that, those two weeks in, in that class, um, my daughter said that she hated math and mm-hmm. that that was her least favorite subject. So it just kind of, um, you know, I just think that there's a better way to teach it. Um, and if you do are, if you do love math and you want to do all the equations, you know, I mean, most people don't don't get older and, and crunch numbers and, and solve equations. Most people don't do that. They, but you need to know the concept concept. So, 
But if you are that person who loves math, you can go become a math major and do all the solving of equations that you want to do. The rest of us, you know, we just want to have fun with it. Well, Kristen, we are out of time, and we wish you the best of success with what you're doing, because it sounds like you've got a great mission in mind, and and we really need people like you teaching. So uh, congrats on on what you're doing, and and we wish you the best. Uh, Susan? Oh, absolutely. I just, I admire it so much, and I also think that it's wonderful that you're coming from a geoscience um, perspective, too, because it's just... It, 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 it's always so connected to something real. And I, I, I love that too. Oh yeah. I, in um, everything I do, I see waves hmm. <laughs> and frequency oh, nice. <laughs> and period. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love it. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> But anyway, again, well, we appreciate having, having you on. Let's all stay in touch and mm-hmm. love to have you on again and tell us how it's going and, and what you're doing with it and what also how the kids are reacting to it. We'd love to get more into that, um, which we didn't get too much into the kids today, but I'd love to mm-hmm. find out, you know, as you teach more and more, how, how they're responding and how they're, you know, taking advantage of this. It'll be fun, fun to, to learn and learn a little bit more about that. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just starting out now. So it'd be fun to be back on and talk about all that stuff in a year from yeah, now. That sounds great. Well, anyway, Absolutely. If you, yep. And if you're watching the show, please subscribe, give us feedback. If you want to get a hold of Kristen, we have her website listed below, curious.com. And, and definitely do take a look at it. And, and um, I know you've got video content for the future too, also being talked about. So there'll be some of that as well. Mm-hmm. So Stay tuned. I think a lot of good things are going to come out of this. So we will see you next week on Life Edge. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.